well done. That's great stuff from the Mighty Cats. Now, tomorrow is a very special day for our next guest. It's his first final as Ooks are on coming, Luke Glasgale. So will you give a warm welcome, please, to Liam O'Neill. <laughs> Well, Liam, the, the teams are nervous tonight, the officials are nervous. Are you nervous? It's a big occasion for you as well. Of course I am. It's my first yeah. final. I've yeah. been looking forward to it for a long time. I think we're going to have a great game. Yeah, that adds to it, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. And what about the build-up? You, can you go and watch the match tomorrow? Are you conscious of watching everything? Is crowd, movement, all of that? Is that... No, I've often said it to people, we're the last people who can enjoy it. Parky Duffy and I are probably the last two who can enjoy the final because you're wondering, you're wondering is everybody happy? Have you got everybody who should have a ticket? ticket? Mm -hmm. Are they in the right place? And you're worried then, will the game be OK? Well, worrying about are they happy, 50% of them won't be, obviously. <laughs> I'd say so. I'd say so. <laughs> but that's the nature of it. You've been worrying about people and looking after people's welfare for a long time, though, Liam. You've been teaching and your family, indeed, have been connected with your local school for a very long time. Absolutely. I've been teaching for 35 years. I taught four years in Dublin and 31 years in Drummer. Um, the connection between my family and the school goes back 101 years. That's incredible. 101 yeah. years. Yeah. My mother went to the school in the 20s. She was reared by her aunt who was teaching in Strummer from 1911 to 1955. Mum was um, orphaned and this lady looked after her. Mm -hmm. My father took over as principal in 41, worked till 81, and I've been there since. So it's wow. a very long connection. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and you've taken a leave of absence now. Uh, for your yeah, tenure. I've taken, reluctantly taken a leave of absence. Um, I thought at one stage I could do both jobs, but it's just impossible. No, and uh, the school would have suffered. And because it's been a huge commitment to me for 35 years, the children come first. And uh, they have a wonderful young teacher, Karen Nolan, who's going to do a great job. And uh, will, the children will be as happy. Right. Well, just reading about your, your presidency and what you've set out as what you want to achieve, the children are obviously very important to you and how children interact with the game and grow their love for the game seems to be one of the cornerstones of your presidency. Absolutely, and uh, we're very concerned that we keep the children happy and keep them involved. Our Go Games proje uh, project, which means that every child under 12, boy and girl, gets a chance to get a game every time to go out to a game is a huge uh, step forward for us in development of children. We divided our coaching area into the child area we create from a primary school, youth area at second level and adult. And we're beginning to realise that you need to treat your children differently. Mm -hmm. And one of the most heartening things, I think you might notice in the, the film, uh, watching the, yeah. the, the bit earlier on, there are far more boys and girls, far more girls involved in Gaelic games now than there were 25 years ago. And we're really very pleased with that. And indeed, the, um, the three presidents of the main sporting sections of the GA, Pat Quill, the ladies football, uh, president Aileen Lawler, Kamogi president and I have formed an alliance and agreement that we want to include every child and we're going to work together as three presidents to promote the expansion of the youth section of our three organisations and increase cooperation so that we can have as many children as possible getting the benefit of playing Gaelic games. Best of luck with that. Obviously we, we wish you well tomorrow obviously personally but I believe Kenny and Galway, one of them will be celebrating tomorrow. I believe you had big celebrations as a family recently. We had, yes. My son, Kieran got married um, in the beginning of August. And um, Kieran has an unusual way of looking at the world. And he has a, a wonderful, he had a wonderful fiancée, uh, Maya Salakangas from Finland. And um, they organised for four months um, an engagement party. They brought their academic friends and some friends to Dublin and they arrived to their engagement party married. <laughs> yeah. They arrived at their engagement party Martin, married. married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That must have been a shock and a celebration in oh, one. I, I was absolutely delighted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not a, big, I'm, I'm not a big man for weddings and um, I was delighted. They did things the wrong way. They're two very special people. Yeah. They have a great way of looking at the world and it was a unique thing to do. Absolutely. I wish you every health yeah. and happiness. That's great. It, it, make, it makes me wonder, would Liam prefer if we told him the All-Ireland final has been played? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, best of luck tomorrow, Thank Liam. It's great much. to have you here. We and, wish you very and, well. With yeah, the and we're hoping for... I'm hoping for the first draw since 1959. All right. <laughs> My heart couldn't take it, I'd say. <laughs> All right, then. Thanks, Liam. Stay with us for part three, where we'll be getting predictions from our 
three wise men about tomorrow's match. Well, I'm not sure if they're wise men, but, but they'll be lively. They will indeed. And a special performance from Galway yeah. rock legends, The Stunning. It's all coming up in part three. Uh -huh. <laughs>
has been an icon since he was a young fellow, which must make it difficult for him, you know, that he has that added pressure of being the big star. Yeah, I mean, there's, pr there's pressure, I think, on all the players. Maybe Joe, I mean, he takes the freeze and that sort of stuff, but, um, you know, he looks at it, it's, it's another game and there's going to be, you know, 14 other guys on the field, hopefully at all times with him tomorrow. And, you know, it's... <laughs> the, 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 you know what I mean? The, 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 the workload has to be shared and that's the way it goes. And Joe's he's pretty cool about it. He doesn't even like... Even when I get asked questions about him, to be honest with you, Des. Uh, so, he give out to you, we'll leave for talking yeah, about yeah, him. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because he just wants to get on with it and, and go out and try and do his best and do his best for the team tomorrow, as, as all the players will, really, you know? Derek, we were talking there about Brian Cody, and of course, there isn't a person in the country, I think, who doesn't know who he is. The name is so famous. But there's another Cody in the audience tonight, and that's Rackard Cody. Could you please tell us who he is and what's his significance to the Kilkenny team? Rackard's probably the driving force behind the, the setup for the last 10 years. And uh, in fairness to Rackard, he does a lot of good work in Kilkenny, and uh, particularly from a player's point of view. He um, looks after, I suppose, our nutrition as regards drinks and uh, everything else. Uh, he's a hard man to get a hurling grip off, all right, but, uh, <laughs> but generally, no, Rackard's a great guy. Does he spare the hurling grips? He, he, he does, actually. I think he <laughs> sells them in Greg Nomad himself. <laughs> <sorry, not laughs> <quite, so. laughs> But no, he's a great character and I uh, have to say he's um, someone that lightens the mood around the dressing room, I think, when uh, things can get serious. But Rackard is a good man for that anyway. He's, he's there in the audience. That's high praise, Rackard. But I was told once he nearly lost the Liam McCarthy Cup after Null Ireland. Is that That's true? right. There's a, in 2008, uh, in the City West on, on the morning, the Monday morning, uh, Monday evening actually, the Ned, and, Ned Quinn, our secretary, said to get the boys together to get on the bus to get over to the train to get home. So... During the course of it, there were a lot of people there which were fantastic people, wanted photographs, and I had to try and do both things. So in the end, I said I'd leave it in the back of the van. So in the meantime, I met two fellas from down home, from Greg Namana, and I said to him, would you bring home the van, and, and it'll be, I'll it'll be down in Kilkenny when I get home. So I came back, anyhow, a few, about 15 minutes later, and I looked, the van was gone. And I actually looked up to the sky, and I see a black cloud coming over me. And then Eddie Kerr and John Mackey happened to walk down the yard and to see what's wrong with your actually. I was turning white. So I said, the cup is gone in the van, what will I do? We wanted it for the train going down there, as course, you know. Yeah. So the next thing Eddie said, look, we'll ring the, the guard at Station Nace. So they rang the guard at Station Nace and they got out of squad car onto the motorway. <laughs> Followed the boys. Boys looked at the speedometer, looked at the van, new van. Uh, we're not speeding. Next thing, sirens, pulled them over, stopped the motorway, pulled them over. Uh, Garda got out, walked up to the window. He said, you have the McCarthy Cup in the car. He said, I haven't. He said, I haven't. <laughs> but he didn't really. He said, get out anyhow and open the back door. He didn't say it in a, in a yeah. nice manner. He said it to him, obviously. But he did, still it was. It was under a sheet in the back of the van. So they opened the door. And above all people in the world to pick out the cup out of the back of the van was a kid Kenny when he walked out in the middle of the motorway and held it up. The so they brought it back to me anyhow in the city west. So I changed. I thought it was the end of the world, this, to be honest with you, at that spot. I turned literally white, you know. Mm -hmm. But look at... Uh, we have a fantastic uh, t sponsor as well as in, in Glamby and Kieran O'Connor's. They're very cooperative and very helpful during the year. We have a great setup uh, from the part of the players, are fantastic guys. But we have mm -hmm. a great uh, secretary as well with Ned Quinn and Paul Kinsel and uh, the Charles, uh, Barry Hickey, you know. So, uh, to that, that's why we've been so, sexful, so successful.